This lecture covers Chapter 9 in your textbook on Education and Training, Practical Tips for Educators and Trainers. This lecture will provide the learner with an overview of the domains and levels of learning, followed by a discussion of the design and application of instructional objectives as learning outcomes. In addition, the process of assigning learning levels to instructional objectives as well as matching the level of instruction to the needs of the learner and the task will be described. Following successful completion of this chapter, the learner will be able to list and define the three domains of learning, list Bloom's taxonomy levels, Apply Bloom's taxonomy levels to the construction of behavioral objectives. Assign taxonomy levels to the educational objectives. Define learning outcomes. In a teaching hospital, many individuals are required to provide instruction as part of their job without any formal training in education. One of their most difficult tasks is planning for instruction and matching the level of instruction to the needs of the learner. For example, training objectives for laboratory technicians who have two years of college education should be at a different level than technologists who have four years of college. Training at specialist level would require an even higher level of complexity. Regardless of the level of instruction, it has been well established that the educational process of teaching and learning are significantly enhanced if both the teacher and learner have a clear definition of the expected learning outcome for the instructional task. This slide shows some of the differences in expectations for learning outcomes. The three domains of learning are cognitive, psychomotor, and affective. Cognitive, acquiring and applying knowledge. Psychomotor, ability to perform tasks or skills. Affective, attitudes or feelings. The taxonomy level for the cognitive domain is probably the most recognized and well used of those currently developed. This taxonomy level was formulated in 1958 by a committee headed by Dr. Benjamin Bloom and is now commonly referred to as Bloom's taxonomy levels. A major problem experienced by educators in this domain is that the six levels overlap, creating some confusion related to the correct level in which to place the objective. As a result, Bloom et al. have listed a number of verbs that can be used in writing objectives. The intended purpose of this list is to facilitate the selection of the correct verb in writing the instructional objective. The different levels of learning or taxonomy levels describe how a learner may progress from beginner to expert in each domain of learning. The main purpose of the taxonomy levels is to aid the instructor in defining the different learning outcomes. By using taxonomy levels, specific learning objectives can be developed starting with a basic level and progressing to increasing levels of difficulty in all three domains of learning. Bloom's Taxonomy Levels Analysis The ability to break down learned material into its component parts so that its organizational structure can be understood. Synthesis, the ability to put parts together to form a new whole. Evaluation, the ability to judge the value of material for a given purpose. 
The psychomotor domain can be well used in the laboratory training area to define the level of competency expected of a learner in performing a variety of tasks. For example, performing tasks with 100% accuracy or operating instrumentation. Once the objectives are written for this domain, the learning outcomes are relatively easy to measure. Measurement may require a checklist of steps to be completed for a procedure or performance of the task with 100% accuracy or within a specified time frame. Practical examinations are frequently used to assess objectives written in the psychomotor domain. The affective domain can be helpful in defining learning expectations for students with respect to work ethic, initiative, interpersonal skills with co-workers, patient confidentiality of laboratory results, and professional interaction with other individuals on the healthcare team. The major problem experienced by most educators or trainers is that objectives in this domain are difficult to write and even more difficult to measure objectively and quantitatively. An example of immunohematology clinical educational objectives can be found in Table 9-5 in your textbook. Please review. The National Accrediting Agency for Clinical Laboratory Science, or NAACLS, currently requires that clinical and didactic educational objectives be written in all three domains. The didactic training should involve more cognitive learning objectives and the clinical setting more psychomotor. It is important to use instructional objectives to balance the level of instruction with the needs of the learner. Achieving this balance with clearly written objectives will provide the basis for the measurable outcome assessment. Instructional objectives written in this format place the focus on the student and the type of knowledge and proficiency required as a result of the learning experience. The verbs described, list, and demonstrate are specific of behavior that indicate how the student shows that he or she has learned. One of the most common errors in writing objectives is to state the objective in a manner that focuses attention on the teaching activity rather than the learning outcome. For example, to demonstrate to students how to use a cell washer. Can this be measured as a learning outcome for the student? Actually, the educator has achieved this objective once the demonstration is completed. A better way to write this objective is in terms of the type of learning outcomes we expect. After the teacher's demonstration, the objectives may be written as follows. After observing the demonstration, the learner will be able to Describe the steps of proper operation of the blood bank cell washer. List the precautions necessary when using the cell washer. List the steps for calibration of the cell washer. Demonstrate skill by using the cell washer with acceptable performance for five patient samples. Clearly, the second objective specifies how a student will demonstrate learning after the instructional period. Note the second objective begins with a verb that implies an activity which can be measured on the part of the student. The second objective clearly indicates what the student can do at the end of instruction. The first objective focuses on the gaining of knowledge rather than the type of behavior that provides evidence of the expected outcome of the learning experience. First, we can define the Bloom's six levels. Level 1, knowledge, involves recall, the remembering of previously learned material. 
This simplest level of learning requires basic memorization of information that may range from simple facts to complex principles or theories. Level 2, comprehension, is the ability to grasp the meaning of the material or information. This usually requires interpretation of information to indicate learning. Level 3, application, requires the ability to use the learned material in new and defined situations. Level 4, analysis, requires using the first three levels of knowledge, comprehension, and application previously described. It represents the ability to break down learned material into component parts so that the overall structure or organization can be understood. The level requires the learner to demonstrate insight in selecting the most significant parts of the material, identifying important components and understanding relationships. The learner must be able to distinguish relevant from irrelevant information, distinguish facts from assumptions, and identify the underlying principles of the concepts. Level 5, synthesis, is the ability to put parts or components together to form a new whole. This level requires the learner to combine elements to form something new through some creative or intuitive process. The learner is expected to develop an original application of the material learned. Level 6, evaluation, is the ability to judge the value of material for a given purpose. This is the highest level of understanding and requires the learner to use all five taxonomy levels in forming an assessment or judgment. This level usually involves the use of values and value judgments. Evaluation implies the determination of the value or quality of information in making a judgment that is usually based on appropriate established criteria. Evaluation involves making judgments based on factual information or values. By now, it is apparent that trying to use all six taxonomy levels, which greatly overlap for writing educational objectives, is not only burdensome but impractical for our field. As a result, most educators use the abbreviated version of taxonomy levels published by the American Society for Clinical Pathology, or ASCP. In practice, these three levels are used to assign taxonomy levels for test questions used for the certifying examinations given by the ASCP. First, recall, ability to recall or recognize previously learned knowledge ranging from specific facts to complete theories. Second, interpretive skills, ability to use recalled knowledge to interpret or apply verbal, numeric, or visual data. Third, problem solving, ability to use recalled knowledge and interpretation or application of distinct criteria to resolve a problem or a situation and or make an appropriate decision. Numerous factors affect the student's clinical rotation experience, including the type and size of the laboratory, geographic region, urban versus rural setting, patient population, and knowledge and expertise of the laboratory clinical instructors. To be a good clinical preceptor, one must not feel intimidated by teaching. Students will ask questions that the preceptor may not readily be able to answer but may be seen as a learning opportunity for both the student and the preceptor. It is perfectly acceptable to say, I do not know, but let's find out. When teaching a student or a new employee a test procedure, be sure to use a method similar to the following. Discuss, demonstrate, Guided practice, independent practice, evaluate. Discuss. 
have the student read the procedure and discuss the individual steps to be sure he understands how the test is performed. Demonstrate. Demonstrate a procedure explaining each step while the student follows along with the written procedure. Guided practice. Let the student perform the procedure under your guidance, allowing him to ask questions along the way while following the written procedure. Independent practice. Have the student perform the test without asking questions while you watch. Evaluate. After the student has practiced the test independently several times, evaluate the skill level achieved. In evaluating students, be cognizant of the halo effect, where preceptors tend to assign better grades to students with personalities similar to theirs regardless of skill level or tend to give all students high or low grades. Creating grading rubrics will assist in making the evaluation of all students less biased than standard check-off forms. Clinical training is a vital component of the student's total educational experience. Armed with the resources and knowledge of what to teach, how to construct behavioral objectives and measurable learning outcomes, as well as how to match the level of instruction to the needs of the learner, the clinical laboratory instructor becomes a highly effective partner in training and mentoring the next generation of medical laboratory science professionals.